What's going on guys? So obviously back with another uh, mock draft. I do have the first pick in this mock draft. Um, my consensus number one up to this point has been Adrian Peterson. Uh, sometimes I go with Eddie Lace here, Jamal Charles, but uh, really any one of those three guys I think is a good number one overall pick. One of the guys that I've been uh, I've been pretty high on recently is Jeremy Hill. Uh, the more drafts I've done, the more I've realized he's normally taken in the second round. Um, I was just looking at a stat on ESPN. He, if you, uh, I think it was any rookie this rush for over um, 800 yards in the last eight weeks of the season, um, has followed to be a top five running back in the next year. So. Um, Impressive stat, so uh, hoping that he continues to trend. Um, I did finally get my uh, fantasy football league set up. Um, I'm not the commissioner, but my team was finally added. And I will uh, show you guys what the draft results were of that league, uh, kind of break down my methodology of uh, picking who I did. Um, as you can see, today I'm doing an 18, an 18 league. Um, if you are in an 18 league, then obviously this will be more relevant towards you. Uh, if you guys have been watching my mock drafts, then obviously I've been doing a lot more football uh, the last couple days than hockey or basketball. Just trying to get as much football in as I can before Thursday. Uh, trying to get at least a draft in every other day. Um, trying to get as much 8, 10, 12, and 14s as I can. I think I've already done two 10s and a 14. See if I can get a 12 team draft done tomorrow. Um, wow, Jamal Charles slipped to six. Like I said, though, the season starts Thursday. It is the uh, Steelers and Patriots. Uh, I'm pretty excited for the season to start and to have uh, college football on Saturday and then uh, the NFL on Sunday. Having both those back going at once is going to be pretty awesome. Uh, it's my favorite time of the year for sports. Basketball is about to be back. Um, same thing with hockey. So, and it's about heading, heading into baseball playoff time, so it's about the best time of the year for sports. Um, pretty excited for it. One guy that I've been noticing that's been dropping more and more as time goes on is C.J. Anderson. More and more people are realizing, I think, that uh, Broncos running backs are kind of hard to trust. If you guys remember, I think it was two years ago, uh, Money Ball, it might have been last year, uh, Money Ball was kind of the hot commodity. He was a uh, late second, early, or late first, early second round pick, and uh, he ended up being a complete bust. Uh, I think it was no Sean Moreno. The it was either the year before or the year after that. So uh, um, yeah, it's been a it's been a rough time for Broncos running backs because I mean obviously they're not the primary focus in that offense. Uh, Peyton Manning takes some pretty much complete control of that offense. Well, Alfred Morris or Alfred Morris was taken pretty early. Alfred Morris is one of I think one of the more underrated players in. Uh, this year's fantasy football, though. If Kirk Cousins can have any sort of decent season, I think that uh, Alfred Morris will have a good season as well. Uh, Alfred Morris has been really consistent over the last three, well, yeah, three years. So, uh, whenever I picked him, whenever he's been on my team, he's always been a solid option. Uh, good RB two. See if Jeremy Hill can slip to me. Maybe a steal at 16. And one guy that's getting looked over in pretty much every draft now is LaShawn McCoy. I think he's going to be better than most people expect. Um, he's got new scenery around him. Um, some of the defenses we be playing are kind of tough. The Jets and the Dolphins have a, have pretty stout front sevens, but the Patriots did lose a little bit on their front seven, so... I think it would be a good year for LaShawn McCoy. If Fred Jackson and C.J. Spiller could find success in that offense, I think LaShawn McCoy can too. Especially with the uh, 
with uh, Tyrod Taylor, quarterback now. Uh, it gives them kind of two running options, keeps defenses honest. Hmm. See if I can maybe get LaShawn or Odell. I don't think Odell will be as good as he was last year, but if he's anywhere close, then um, he's worth a, I'd say a top three or I'd say a top three round pick. So um, if you can snag him in the first twenty pick, or if if he drops to maybe fifteen or twenty, then um, definitely a good pickup to get for your uh, first wide receiver. I think that having Victor Cruz back though is gonna end up stealing some of the limelight away from. Uh, from Odell. Ruben Randall, I think, is going to get a little bit more targets, too. And uh, Shane Vereen, probably some steal, some goal line targets. So um, I don't think it'll be as good a year for Odell, but I think it'll still be a solid year. And TJ Yeldon at 20. Um, let's see what's. Uh, quarterback got a lot deeper since uh, Tom Brady came back. I think he's a lot better option than Drew Brees or Peyton Manning. Even I, I honestly think Tom Brady's going to be the third best quarterback this year. Um, I think him, I think him, Tony Romo, Ryan Tannehill, and uh, Teddy Bridgewater are going to have big years. A lot of people are high on Teddy Bridgewater, but a lot of people think that the hype is kind of unwarranted. Uh, I think that Teddy Bridgewater would be real solid. Snag Emmanuel Sanders. I would be high on DeAndre Hopkins if he had a if he had a good quarterback thrown to him. I don't think the Ryan Mallet or Brian Corey is going to be able to get it done this year. Our running backs are pulling pretty high. Uh, TJ Yeldon at 20, and then uh, Rashad Jennings at 29. Some guys like Carlos Hyde, Frank Gore, uh, Justin Forsett still on the board. I think Mar taking Mark Ingram in the top 30 is probably a pretty bad joy or a pretty bad choice though with uh, with CJ Spiller in that offense now. <laughs> Like I normally do, I'm going to go through the first seven rounds, go and fill out my uh, tight end and flex positions, and then I'm going to put all the uh, results in the description below. Uh, if you do want to skip over the video and just look over my uh, just look over my results, then uh, yeah, feel free to do that. Like I said, um, all my bench players, my defense and kicker are going to be in be in the description below. Just I know that some people like actually watching to see how uh, drafts or the draft plays out. Tight 
Browns are going pretty early in this draft. This draft moved along really quick, so, uh, yeah, like I said, after the seventh round, I'll give you guys a quick team recap, and then, uh, yeah, go ahead and be done with the draft with the rest on auto pick. Peyton Manning still on the board. Yeah, sure enough. If you can get Tom Brady past pick 40, that's definitely a good pickup. All the running, or all the top three tight ends were taken in the first 34 picks. Uh, this is one of the thinnest years of tight end I've ever seen. If you uh, if you've got a good sleeper in mind for tight end, maybe like a uh, Austin Safarian Jenkins or Josh Hill type player, then especially if you got confidence in them, I definitely go ahead and take them. Wait a little bit till the end of the draft. If you're not able to, I'd say if you're not able to snag one of the top three or four tight ends, then it's not really worth reaching for them. I think Travis Kelsey will be good this year, though. Chiefs are a little bit limited on their receiver options. They have Jeremy Macklin, of course. Uh, most of their plays are going to go to Jamal Charles, Nile Davis, and Travis Kelsey, as long as he can stay healthy. All right, to give you guys a little quick recap of my team, Pretty standard looking team for the way I draft. I uh, got Tom Brady at quarterback, Adrian Peterson running back, LaShawn McCoy, Odell Beckham, DeAndre Hopkins, Travis Kelsey, and Keenan Allen. So, uh, yeah, the, like I said, a couple times I'll put the little uh, complete roster in the description below. But yeah, that's pretty much it. See you.